Okay, going on a special op. Now, I know some of you are scared. I know I'm scared. Something about those Carter carburetors, it's a little bit intimidating. Going to try to make it and break it down real simple for you. Joe's Motor Pool WO539S carburetor. Welcome back, Scott Schiller for Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts and Team G503 here on YouTube. I know, I know, it's a little bit corny with the special ops and we're going to be scared, but it is kind of intimidating, a little scary. The 539S WO carburetor from Joe's Motor Pool, these things are fantastic. Now, some guys will say there's nothing to those carburetors and it's a piece of cake, and you will be right. Other people will say, there's a lot to those carburetors. I can't figure it out. You would be right too. I'm kind of one of those guys on the opposite side of the spectrum. I won't tell you which one, but it is a little bit intimidating. Even though you've done everything else on a Jeep, for some reason, these carbs here, they, they people get nervous about them. So we're going to try to make it really simple for you. I'm going to show you in this video, and it's a longer one, like I say, uh, but you're going to find a, little, a lot of cool information here. I'm going to show you some initial adjustment checks you can do on these carburetors so you will know that they will fire and idle, and then you can make your further adjustments after that. Let's dig right into the video. I've got my Joe's Motor Pool 539S reproduction carburetor here, W.O. Carter. These are exact reproductions in every way, right down to the embossing here on the bowl, and they've got all the correct markings. Now, when you get these, they're pretty much ready to go, except for I want to stress something really strongly here. Every engine, no matter what, if it's been rebuilt, if it's been running for a while, every engine's going to be a little bit different, and you're going to have to make adjustments on that carburetor when you install it on your Jeep. Now, to make sure it's going to run, there's a couple things that you can check. And you are also provided the tools with the Joe's Motor Pool Carb. This is our metering rod gauge. And this is our float height gauge. And they're both also reproductions correct of the Carter carburetor. They're fantastic little tools to have. And if you're going to have an uh, old Jeep, you probably want to have those anyways. Because these little jokers, as stout and wonderful as they are, they seem to always like to have, need a little bit of attention. It's just some little things that you need to know. They're, they're very basic carburetor, single barrel. And I'm going to show you some things that you can check with those tools and how to check them with those tools and how we do it here at the shop and just get our initial setup here so we know it's going to idle and run and then we can make our final adjustments after the fact and tune it to our exact engine. You're going to need a couple tools. I've got this little magnetic bowl that I love. I got this from Harbor Freight. It's very inexpensive, but the magnet's real good on it. I keep that because there's a lot of little parts that are going to be taken off and screws and you want to put them in the, in the magnetic bowl there so they don't go everywhere and you don't knock them off on the bench and lose them. You're going to need a 5 16 inch wrench. You're going to need a set of some sort of adjustable player. Now these little guys, I love these wrenches here, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right. It's Nipix, and they are made in Germany, and I believe my good friend Nick Murillo sells these, these uh, type wrenches because everybody seems to ask about them in the video after I show them. And they're adjustable, and they hold real nice. They've got nice, a nice face there on the jaws. And I'll be using that in the video also. And, well, maybe I won't, but this is what we'll be using to adjust the float if we do. You can use a pair of pliers, or you can also use a, a small crescent wrench. will also work as well, but I like these for some reason. Also, you'll need a flathead screwdriver. This is a gunsmith's screwdriver. And the reason I use the gunsmith screwdriver is because they've got uh, different size blades that will fit nicely into the screws because some of the slots are a little larger and it makes it really nice and you're not going to damage your screws with that and that's also magnetic. The first thing I'm going to do is you've got your little idle screw right here and it tightens up against that boss and that's how you adjust your idle in or out. I'm going to make sure that that screw is backed off so it is not touching this boss here on the lower piece of the carburetor. You take all tension off that. That's the first thing we're going to do, make sure that that's loose and not touching. The next thing I'm going to do is remove these screws here on the top half of the carb, and they've got a lock washer on the inside of them. You'll see that here in a second. Take the screw out, and there's the lock washer. And I'm going to put that in the magnetic bowl, and then we're going to turn the carb around. You'll have another one on the opposite side. Remove that, and that one's got the tag on it. Let's unscrew that. We'll take the tag out and all. We'll set that in the bowl also. 
Spin this back around. There's just a little lever right here. And then we're gonna take this top, pull it straight up, and we're gonna move it out of the way, or you can go forward just like that. Now, if you wanna remove it, you can take this little fitting right here, this brass boss here, and you can push forward on that. And you can remove the whole top if you'd like to. I leave them on when I'm doing this procedure, especially if you're doing this on the engine, but you can remove that, it's real easy to do so. Take a look here. I just wanna show you the little positions of some parts here. You see this little, these little clips that hold the rod on there. Little clips on the back. And this in itself right here, this right here is our metering rod. We'll get to that in a minute. First, I wanna open this float bowl up and we're gonna take a look at the float. Before I do that, this is, a, this is a difficult little part of this because this little part here likes to fly away, but we're gonna take this little clip off the top of this rod. I'm gonna push up on the bottom here just to get started. Hope you can see this with my big fat fingers in the way. I'll push up on the bottom and we'll pull that off there. See how little tiny that clip is? I'm gonna put him back in the bowl there, magnetic bowl, love that thing. Now, we're gonna take the rod out. You just pull it out and twist it a little bit and we're gonna lay that down. Now we've got four screws on the top here of the float bowl cover and we're gonna take those out. They've also got little lock washers on the bottom side of them. Kind of heard leaning over the top here, this camera stand with the light on it. Yeah, make a little joke, Scott, while we take these screws out. I run one of these carburetors on the 43 Willis MB, that's the Team G503 Jeep. I've had no issues with it. And after a bunch of times messing with an old WO carb that was my grandfather's on the 46 CJ2A, I finally put one of these on there also. Now I did put that original one away just for posterity. Someday I'll see if I can do something with it, figure out what exactly was going on with it. But ever since I put that carb to carb on that 46, I have had no problems whatsoever. Okay, so now we've got the four screws out. I'm going to gently pull up on this because you'll see here that the leather, we pulled out of that little slot right there and there's inside the bowl and there's your seat on the bottom there. That's where your metering rod needle fits into. Okay, so now we're going to flip this over. Here's where it's gonna get fun also. We're gonna take this little pin out of those two ears on the float. Little pin just slides out and then we can take our float off and then you're gonna see the needle down in there. Then we're going to take the gasket off. After we take the gasket off, we're gonna go back and we're gonna put our float. Now see, I've already got something here that I really don't like. And this could have happened in shipping, this could have happened during assembly, but if you look at those two ears right there, they're a little bit crooked. This one's a little bit crooked. So here's where my little players is gonna come in handy, right here. We're gonna take this, and I'm just gonna square that up a little bit. Yeah, nice and square now. And we're gonna put it back we're gonna put it back on top, here where we took it off of, carefully, and we're gonna insert that pin back in also. And that just floats there like that. There's nothing that holds that in there. It just sits there, it can move back and forth. It won't once it's inside the bowl again, but for now it will. Now, here's what we're gonna check. As we're bouncing up down here. We're going to check the distance between the top, or I should say the bottom, but this is what's facing us, of that surface and the very bottom here of the float. And we're done, we're gonna do that with this gauge. This is 3 eighths of an inch thick, now you gotta stop it from bouncing. But if you take that in there like that, that is just about right. Now this one is what I'll call a little bit low. So you see here as I'm dragging my gauge across there, it just lifts a slight amount up on that float. So what I'm gonna do, and it could be better, could be worse, but what I'm gonna do is, so I can show you how this is done, so if that 
is too low, we need to raise this little tongue right here a little bit. The camera, this little tongue just a little bit. And there's where I use my players also. Okay, so let's take a close look here, what I'll call this little tongue that sticks out from the flute here. Now, that sits on there, if we're upside down again. If it sits like that, if I was to bend that down, it would actually sit on top of the needle there and it would raise the float. So we're gonna be bending down. If I was to bend up on that in this position, then it would make it go down a little bit further. And in this case, we just need to come a little teeny bit up. So here we're with the Wonder Players again, and I mean just a tad you're gonna bend on this. It's really easy to bend too much. I'm just gonna bend a little bit. It's probably a 30 second of an inch. And then we're gonna go back and we'll put it back on and then we'll check that height again. When you're working on it in this position, now you could have taken out that needle first, but when you're working on this position, just make sure you don't hit that needle and bend it. And let's check this again. Now, if I did this right, this will just touch that float. And there it is. I see it, it just it just touches it. So I'm I'm gonna be good with that measurement. And you can play with that as much as you want to get it to go you know, exactly the three eighths inch height, but that is crucial in the operation of your carburetor. So you want to start there. Now I'm gonna put this back inside the bowl and then we're gonna remove the metering rod and I'll show you how you can adjust that and check that. I'm gonna get to show you one more time how to remove the float because I forgot to put the gasket back on. <laughs> So these instructional videos, yeah, I've been scared of these. I'm scared of these carburetors, and I'm not scared of the carburetor is it's going to function correctly or not. For some reason, just like a lot of us Jeepers, uh, carburetors intimidate me for some reason, which makes no absolute sense whatsoever because I've rebuilt the L134 engine, I've rebuilt axles, I've rebuilt transmissions, and for some reason, these carburetors got the mystique that you know, they're difficult to work on when they're really, they're really not. You know, to get them fine-tuned is a little doing, but not that hard. Okay, so now we've got our gasket back on there. Should have did that first. Or again, this could be a teaching moment also. You do not want to use your gauge against that gasket because that is not the correct reading. You have to do it with the gasket removed. Okay, let's see if I can get this back on here. Now, I don't take that metering rod out. It does move around when I do these initial adjustments because it seems for me to go back in easier if I don't. And what I'm gonna do is get this back up, get that leather lined up. While I got the leather out, let's talk about this. If you ever see comments about you gotta let this soak up with some gas, if you're having some flat spots or a little bit of problem when you first initially install the carburetor, let that sit a little while and get swelled up with gasoline and then you won't have an issue. When we insert this back, you can kind of set it about midway so you can move that up and down. It'll make it a little easier if it's set midway. And then we're gonna put this back on. Now here, you do not want to force this back on here. If you feel any resistance or you have any issues doing that, don't force it. You see how easy that went back in? I'm all lined back up and my holes lined back up. If you have an issue where you're having a problem putting that back in, be patient with it. Do not bend that metering rod as you're putting it back inside there. You just play with this back and forth until it drops right back down and they're nice for you. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead, and I'm not gonna bore you with screwing back down, but I'm gonna go ahead and put my four screws back in here, and I'm gonna snug them back up. Okay, so I've got them on there hand tight. Make sure you've got your lock washers on there. When you're tightening these back down, what I do is I go crosswise, like an X. One, two, three, four, and I don't tighten them all the way down, all the way, just get them up snug, and that just kinda ensures that that's gonna stay square on there and make sure you don't squish down in your gasket. You really don't have to put a lot of force on these, but you do want to make sure that that gasket gets seated back in its position so you don't leak any fuel. Now, after I get them all tightened down where I like them where they're just touching, I'll come back through and give them like a half a turn, quarter turn, half turn, just snug them up. You do not need to reef down on these, but they do need to be nice and snug and tight. Okay, so that's all back on there, well and good. Next, we're gonna be working on that metering rod. And again, we've got one of our friends, the little clips there on the side that we have to remove. Wanna get in close on this one. I'm gonna show you a couple things here. Here's our little clip that holds the metering rod in. Here is a little washer or a little disc that is, it rides between the float bowl and here 
as you can see, and there's this little teeny spring right there. And that little joker is hard to see. But what you want to want to do is just take your little tool here, and you don't need to put a lot of force on that either, and just pop that out of that little slot hole that's on the side there. I hope you can see that little spring right there, and then there's the hole. That's a that's a uh, little small detail there, but an important one. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove that clip. Again, I'm going to push up on the bottom of it so it starts, and I'm going to pull it off with my thumb. I don't like these little clips because they're tiny. <laughs> but there you go. Pull that clip off there, and we'll set him back down in the magnetic bowl as well. Now, here comes the fun part. We're gonna take our metering rod, and you can lift up on a little bit of this if you need to. Get it up there a little bit, and then we're gonna take him out. And I'm just gonna spin it towards the middle and pull it straight up. Now when I do that, that little washer I showed you is gonna to wanna to come out. So we're gonna set that aside as well. And there's our metering rod. These are really nice also, and I'm, I'm really impressed with the production of these. If you look close on there, you're gonna see the part number on the side there. They've gone to every extreme they could with the detail of these carburetors, and I'm super excited about them. Okay, let's take a close look at the top now, so in case you get messed up here and something happens while you're doing this, your bolt and the little washer that's there goes on the outside of this arm, and the spring goes on the inside. Now, if this falls out, there is slots in there, or, or I'll say flat sides in there, that go down in there. Because sometimes when you do this next move, you kind of get going and you knock that out of there and you wonder how it went back together. <laughs> so anyway, all right, I'm gonna loosen up this nut. Just just loosen it. I mean, I mean I'll take it off, see how it slides up and down there? Make sure you do those parts again. We got the bolt with the screw, the washer on the outside, then the flat spots there, and then that spring wrapped around there. And we're just gonna loosen that for the time being. We're going to take our metering rod tool or gauge next, and note that flat spot right there on the top, because that's what's gonna be important for us. And again, these are all marked nice, just like Carter would have done it back in the day. This is a little interesting, but now when you do this, these pieces right here can come undone, and you'd have to push them back together. So you're gonna to wanna to keep your thumb on there just so that doesn't come apart and you can push up on this and kind of get yourself a space there. Don't damage your little spring. Then we're gonna get our metering rod gauge and we're gonna drop it down in that hole like so. The bottom's out and then we're going to slowly drop that down as such. Now remember, in the beginning, we took the tension off of that throttle adjustment so there would be no tension at all because we want that to be exactly the same height and the measurement that that gauge is. So with that pin resting there on the bottom of that gauge, the flat spot of our gauge, we're going to take it with our thumb and just hold it with your thumb. Don't You don't have to push down on it. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to snug up that nut again. Now, when you are snugging this nut up, it's going to have a tendency to want to walk up on you of those, of those ears there on that bracket. That's why we're going to keep the thumb right there. You're not pushing down, you're just holding it so that screw, when you're tightening it, does not come up. You don't need to reef down hard on that either. Just make sure it's snug. And after that's done, so we've got our height set, just double check that is just, it's just resting on the bottom etched, notched out corner of that tool. And then we're gonna take this up a little bit again and out comes our gauge. So that's all set. Now our metering rod goes back in. These are fun. They either gonna go right, they either drop right back in or you've kind of got to fiddle with them a little bit. Make sure that your spring with that little catch that goes in that hole's out of the way. And then we're gonna drop it. Whoop, nah, ha, ha, I almost forgot. This is, this is gonna be good too because then you guys won't either. I'm gonna put this little washer back over that hole. You don't wanna forget that, very important. Now we're going to take our metering rod and go back down in there. Let's see if it drops right back down in there for me. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. If it doesn't, what you can do is you can kind of spin that back and forth and don't force this. Just let it, there, bingo, we're back in. Now, you can take this little clip 
that little spring that we talked about earlier so many times. And we're going to see if we can get it right back in that little hole without any issues. And then we can put our other clip back in. And we're almost out of the woods on this one. Okay, so he's back in. A little, I'll show you close if I can here. See if the, let's see if I can focus it. There we go. That's a good shot of that spring in that hole there. So we back up now. The wonders of modern technology, these cameras, I'm telling you. Okay, so now we're going to put our spring back on. A little clip there. And push down until it clips. And that's all done. Not so bad. This also likes to be fun sometimes when you're putting it back in there. You don't want to bend that accelerator rod. So I'm going to push up a little bit on this. Makes it easy. It's going to drop right in there. And then we're going to take our second clip and put that back on. There. All back on, all assembled. So now our metering rod is adjusted. And that wasn't hard at all. The last thing we're going to do, I took this off and I'll show you how to put it back on. You don't have to take this off again, but you, you kind of get it out of your way if you want to. Just slip it back on that post there and then get it all lined back up. We'll bring it back up here. And I'm going to show you a little pitfall. If we would have messed up this, which can come loose. Now I'm going to show you a close-up picture of it so you take a look at yours. You see how that's you see how that's cammed in there at the top to that? If that pops loose, you will not be able to get this back on the top of the carburetor. So make sure that that's in order. And then basically that just slips right back on over the top there. And then we're going to put our two screws back in. These are a little larger, but the head there, that slotted screwdriver fits just beautifully. And again, not fully tight, just to get it started, make sure everything's lined up. Put our other screw back in there with the tag. Five, three, nine S by Joe's Motor Pool. Okay, once I've got them both in, I'm gonna line this tag up only because that's the way I am. I don't like stuff crooked. I suppose it really doesn't matter, but I'm gonna make it square. You take that, hold it nice. You're gonna get that a nice snugging. Don't over tighten them. And we'll give the back one a nice tightening. Okay, and also I'm gonna do this because I like that too. Anyways, <laughs> you see my little tricks. So we're all back together here. Now, once this is mounted onto your Jeep, you're gonna have to make a couple other adjustments too. And that would be, uh, I won't get into that right now, but we'll, we'll install one of these in the near future and I will show you how to do the adjustments. It's really not hard. If you did those uh, two things there that I showed you, three things, because we remember now, we took our idle screw off there as well. There it is. And that's, you know, remember now, you took that off. So if you want to idle it, you can adjust that like that after you install it. But if you do those two things and check those two things, I bet you that your Jeep will idle and fire, and you can work the details out from there. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope this helped you out. Again, quality carburetor, no question in my mind. This is one of my favorite things from Joe's Motor Pool because I think they're absolutely fantastic and going to make a huge difference in the Jeep restoration world. See you next time. Thank you for watching. And there you have it. It's not that hard. You had little little pieces in there, a little bit intimidating, and uh, you don't want to screw it up. But if you if you take it apart and you take your time and you watch every little piece and you don't lose anything, it's not that difficult. So now we've got the initial adjustments done. And back way back in the in the video series, we installed these onto the Jeep. We need to do a video, I guess, in the future where we show how to adjust these on your actual vehicle, which will be coming in the near future. Please stay tuned. If you'd like to follow along what we're doing the Team G503 videos and for Ron Fritz Fast with Jeep Parts, and now I got my own website too, gonna throw a plug in it for it there, g503team.com. I'm actually a East Coast vendor of these parts, and I've got a little bit of a stock here in Charleston, South Carolina, that I can send you. Check out that new website. I think you'll like it. Still working for Ron Fitzpatrick, still working for Joe's Motor Pool. Just trying to do a little logistic thing, see how that works out. 
Until next time, my friends, keep it safe. Don't be scared of the carburetors. They are awesome. And happy jeeping.